All right, so welcome everyone. My name is Patrick Ronay. I'm a member of Villanova's Office of Undergraduate Admission. First and foremost, a party congratulations from our office on your admission to Villanova University. I know that's echoed by myself, the faculty and staff here tonight, and the entire Villanova community, as we're tremendously excited that you're considering joining our class of 2028. In our admission process this year, of course, we sorted through about 24,000 applicants, and we firmly believe that yourselves and those the rest invited to the honors community represent the intellectual, the best intellectual promise that this incoming class has to offer. And as a result, you've been invited to join the honors program. So to learn more about what the honors program will entail during your Villanova years, what that means academically and beyond, we have great faculty and staff here tonight to speak about the program. We know that some of you did submit questions in advance. Those will be answered. And for those of you that has, have questions that come up during tonight's session, please do utilize the Q&A function. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the director of the Honors Program, Dr. Anna Morland. Thank you so much, Patrick. I am delighted to be with you here this evening. Congratulations to the Villanova Honors Class of 2028. Uh, my name is Patrick Mentioned. I'm, I'm Dr. Anna Moreland. I'm a longtime faculty member here at Villanova. I'm the director of the Honors Program. I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I'm trained as, as a theologian. But most importantly, I'm a Villanova parent. I have been um, granted access to aspects of Villanova life as a parent that I never had access to as a, fam as a faculty member. And I am honestly really grateful that my children have chosen to study at Villanova. So this evening's gonna uh, operate kind of like a flipped classroom. You will be invited to uh, either join the live stream on Friday afternoon uh, at from 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time admissions. I'm sure we'll get all the information out to you about that. That student panel will be um, recorded as well. So you can either watch the recording or you can join the live stream to get a sense of the jewels of the program, of the students that really make honors what it is. Um, what we're gonna do tonight is mainly just field your questions. So um, you won't be there um, for the program, so you won't be able to ask your own questions. So basically tonight is a question and answer session. And what I've done, Dr. Sweeney and Emmy have done um, is just kind of split up the questions and prepare some introductory comments, which shouldn't take more than 10 to 15 minutes among the three of us. And then we'll open it up and we're here to answer whatever questions or concerns or doubts or anything that you have, um, because we want you to make the, the best decision that you can make each of your families. Uh, we, know, we know how important it is. I have four children of my own, so I've been through this process. So honors draws, as Patrick said, the most academically talented students from across the country and the world. In honors, we tie a high caliber education to a deepened understanding of what a successful life looks like. We are a national leader in academic excellence, holistic education, and leadership development. During the four years that you join us in honors, we will offer you a transformational education. So who are you? You're a very select group of high school students. Honestly, you're exceptional. You come not only from around the country, but also around the world, countries like India and Nicaragua, England, and Vietnam. For those of you submitting SAT scores, the average SAT score is a 1530. That's a really high score. Uh, tonight, those of you tuning in tonight, we've got students from Minnesota, Michigan, Massachusetts, California, Texas, Nevada, and several others as well. The honors academic experience matches the intellectual caliber of our students. Now, what does that mean? Honors seminars are not harder than other classes at the university. They are not more work. That is not what distinguishes an honors seminar from classes across the tracks. The it's the students around that seminar table that make those courses come alive. I've been teaching in honors for almost two decades and I depend on the intellectual firepower of my students when I walk into that classroom and I have never been disappointed. What makes honors distinctive though, is that ironically, we ask our best Villanova students to slow down 
You've won the race of high school. Congratulations. You knocked it out of the park. Now it's time to take a step back and to downshift to ensure that you walk intentionally through the four years of your college experience. Honors has built a series of courses to help you do that, to adapt to college life, to pursue professional development and professional discernment, most importantly, and to prepare yourselves to flourish as Villanova alumni. I know it's hard for you to think about being a Villanova alumni when you're just trying to decide where you're going to college, but uh, you know I'm here to tell you four, four years goes quickly. So during the fall semester, you'll take about two to three courses in the honors program, along with other courses, uh, alongside other courses across the, the university. You'll fulfill your major requirement. You'll come back to honors senior year, and you'll have a senior capstone experience. So honors complements and enhances your Villanova experience. It does not supplant it. You're blended with all first year students, beginning with orientation. Villanova runs a fantastic orientation program. On South Campus, where most first year students live, Emmy's gonna talk to you about the honors dorm, but you'll be living and dining with, with most first year students on South Campus. And then in a lot of your classes, you're going to be with students not in the honors program, but we offer you a nest within the wider community to land in college and to land in college with, uh, which, uh, with other students who are in, as intellectually alive as you are. So I'd just like to highlight two scholarship opportunities for honors students that are reserved only for honors students tonight. One is a study abroad scholarship called the Connolly Delouvrier Scholarship. We have a generous number of scholarships available every semester for students to study abroad. You have to apply for the scholarship, but you're, um, you are uh, given tuition free for the semester that you're studied, studying abroad. Um, it's a great idea. We really want to uh, support students to study abroad because it really does deepen and enhance your college experience. And then we also have a summer program called the Vocare Summer Fellowship that, su that supports students who are, take an unpaid internship. We give honor students $5,000 fellowships in order to enable you to work for a nonprofit sector, for example, to take an internship you wouldn't otherwise be able to take because most students have to earn money over the summer. It's a great opportunity, and I encourage you to take advantage of it. So to get a sense of what our students are doing in honors, I uh, encourage you to follow us on Instagram at VU Honors. Uh, I'm not actually on Instagram myself, but I hear that's how you can do that. Um, I'll end by assuring you that we find the best faculty to match our students' intellectual acumen. We complement this rigorous academic experience with holistic features both inside and outside the classroom. We teach crucial skills of discernment, so you own the choices you make, both professional and personal. And we do all this with a Catholic and Augustinian educational vision. Now, to those of you who've decided to join us in August, I can't wait to meet you. To those of you who are still deciding, I hope to meet you in August. To all of you though, I want to say you will blossom wherever you are planted. You should not, however, not enjoy your second semester senior year. All of you should enjoy your second semester senior year. You have two times in your life when you're able to be a second semester senior. And I hope the next time you'll be a Villanovan with us. So thank you. These are the introductory comments that um, I've prepared. And I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Sweeney, who is in charge of the first year curricular experience. So he'll talk about the curriculum. And then Emmy Moffett-Brown, who is our assistant director, will speak a little more about the curriculum and also first-year housing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, part of what I'll start with is, uh, uh, well, one thing to note, uh, I don't have any kids at Villanova. Yes, my, my children are, are too little, but I myself uh, am an alum. Uh, I did my PhD at Villanova, so I'm very happy to have uh, had my education at Villanova and to have returned here to be able to teach uh, students like you. Um, and what I want to echo about uh, what Anna said is that the honors program is not necessarily about harder, it's really about deeper, not about tougher grades, but about a more kind of coherent vision. In that sense, what we're trying to do in honors is live out what the whole University of Villanova is about, but in a more intentional uh, and deep way. 
And we do that in a particular way with our living and learning cohorts, which approximately 80% of our honor students participate in. These are a chance to take your core courses at Villanova and integrate them more fully. So they work together to provide you a holistic education and a deeper sense of what Anna mentioned of, of this kind of career preparation uh, and more importantly, career discernment. Um, these core, this the living and learning core doesn't add course uh, work, but it does allows you to fulfill those core courses in a different way, uh, centered on these deep questions of human life. Uh, Villanova is very proud of our Augustinian heritage, and as you'll discover if, when you come to Villanova, uh, Augustine was very much a person of, of questions, uh, and so we shape our whole education here around those uh, core questions. Uh, so each cohort is shaped by this sense of different questions, but also with different themes. So I wanna to speak to one, one cohort first, it's called the Examined Life Cohort. This is kind of the, the core of our cohorts. It provides a vision of thinking about what is what, what is the good? What is a good human life? Uh, what is a kind of morally good ordering? Uh, the class on, on the true, about how do we understand truth? Uh, what is the, the role of truth in our life? Those two courses um, fulfill your Augustine and Culture Seminar requirement. Right? So, that, so again, you're not adding course load, you're just deepening your uh, sense of what these courses are about. The Exam of Life then ends with a course on the beautiful. Uh, for most of our students, we'll continue into that course, which fulfills, uh, at least in the College of Arts and Sciences, your requirements for writing and literature. So the Exam of Life kind of is the central cohort uh, in its sense of vision, particularly because it starts with the good, and all of our cohorts are meant to start with a reflection on the good. So another cohort we have is the Medical Humanities cohort. So this is a cohort for people who are considering uh, a medical career, people who are considering a career in the sciences, certainly any of you who may be nurses, or anyone who's just interested in, you know, what does it mean to practice medicine in a, a humane and humanistic way? And what is the role of science as a path towards understanding? And how does science integrate uh, with other paths uh, of understanding? That Medical Humanities also allows the option uh, for a, a, an honors minor for those who are interested. In addition to that, we have the, the politics, the philosophy, politics, and economics cohort, the PPE cohort. Um, this is a uh, cohort that, again, fulfills your requirements, but allows you to think, what is the meaning of politics? What is politics for? Uh, what is the role of economics? Is economics our whole life or part of our life? And ultimately, what is the kind of ordering that we want to envision for a, a more just society? Our last cohort is the Business, Society, and Technology cohort, uh, which, again, reflects in these three major parts of our life, business, society, and technology, in order to see how do we order those aspects of our life towards the good. So, again, all these different cohort opportunities allow, allow for this kind of deeper, more integrated education. Um, and when they, it does also this through also the opportunity to be living uh, in community uh, in St. Monica's Hall, and in opportunities to leave campus. So one of the things we uh, do in honors that is not a part necessarily of everyone else's education in Villanova is we, we take our classes to uh, cultural events. So uh, museums in Philadelphia, we just took our students to a production of Macbeth here in Philadelphia. Uh, so it's a chance to kind of integrate and broaden that education while living in a kind of intentional community together for your first, uh, for your first year as a Villanova undergrad. So that's just a little bit about our cohorts. Uh, you can find more information about those on our website uh, and also in you know, communications we send you. Uh, I hope you'll consider them. It's a great way to pursue your education. Uh, and I hope maybe to see you across the seminar table come August. Thank you. And I'll hand things over to Emmy Brown. Great, thank you so much, Terrence. Um, so my name is Emmy Brown, and as Assistant Director of the Honors Program, I oversee all Honors Academic Advising. So if you're here in August and you have questions about classes and getting the Honors Degree, um, I would be your, uh, your first point of reference for that. Um, I also oversee our partnership with uh, Residence Life on Honors Housing um, and the Shaping Initiative, which is what I'm going to speak to you guys a little bit about now. Um, so as Dr. Sweeney mentioned, um, we have honors housing that it's typical for all cohort members to live in, um, but all honors students have the opportunity to request honors housing on Villanova's campus as first year sophomores and juniors. Unfortunately, there's no designated honors housing for seniors at this point. Um, living in honors housing helps students to make friends in the honors program while also remaining integrated with the broader Villanova community. Um, most first year students live on South Campus, which is where the honors first year dorm is located. So you're still um, still integrated in that way. 
um, and it creates opportunities for collaboration and fellowship. Um, requesting honors housing is a choice that I would say at least three quarters of our incoming class each year makes. Um, now, honors housing assignments are actually done by the Office of Residence Life, um, not by us. And uh, honors housing is technically not guaranteed, but we place as many students in honors housing as we can. Um, in fact, we switched the first year dorm to St. Monica this year um, because it's, while it's basically identical inside to Coughlin Hall, the old first year dorm that you may have heard about on our website or on your tours, um, there are more rooms in it. So we can house even more honors first years this way. Uh, now, if you request honors housing and you either have an honors roommate coming in or you're willing to be placed randomly with an honors student, uh, it's not quite a guarantee, but there's a very, very, very high likelihood that you will end up in that dorm, St. Monica. Um, and if not, it is guaranteed that you will at least end up on South nearby in one of the neighboring buildings. Um, you are able to apply with non honors uh, with a non honors roommate, but that is uh, those students will be placed um, based on space availability. Um, as Dr. Moreland alluded to, there are these unofficial Instagram groups or Instagram pages and Facebook groups, I would imagine, um, for uh, incoming Villanova students looking for roommates. Um, search Villanova class of 2028 on Instagram, and I'm sure they'll come up. Uh, you can connect with people that way and. Uh, make sure that you indicate that you're an honor student looking for another honor student to live with if um, if you would like to. Um, they uh, the, uh, One of the requirements for requesting honors housing is that you need to opt into the honors program. So the deadline to opt in is May 10th. Um, if you don't opt into the honors program, uh, you won't be placed in honors housing, even if you request it. Um, it's one of your uh, items on the admitted students checklist that you complete. The housing application is open, I believe, already for early decision students. It opened on April 2nd, and then all for, it opens for all first years on May 6th. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, other unique elements of the honors program uh, that we offer to our first year students is shaping a college life. So shaping a college life is a graded one credit elective course uh, designed for first year students. You can request a spot in the course when you submit your honors housing form, that's for a uh, housing application. That's where you'll request your cohort if you want one. Um, and you can also request to join Shaping a College Life there. Um, we know that you have a lot on your plate during your first fall semester. Starting college is a huge transition and Shaping a College Life is a class that is designed to help you navigate that transition and all of the academic, practical and interpersonal challenge um, that challenges that come along with it in a purposeful way. The course is organized around these three key themes of achievement, community, and purpose. Um, and we'll explore a wide variety of topics from uh, things like the nature of education and the purpose of the university to success and failure and how to cope with failure, community, friendship, um, dating, relationships, um, all of these practical and academic elements of college life that you're gonna be getting acclimated to as a first year. Now, the really unique thing about shaping a college life is that the class is facilitated by honors juniors and seniors who took it themselves as freshmen. Um, so there's a uh, an instructor of record, me, <laughs> who teaches the teaching practicum for the upper uh, or the juniors and seniors. And then the actual class for the first years is a discussion based seminar style class that's led by them. So this is a really unique opportunity to get to know not only fellow honor students in your own incoming class year, but also older honor students who have been through exactly what you're going through and um, have a lot of practical wisdom to offer. Um, we feature occasional guest speakers, um, group and individual reflections. We do excursions outside of the classroom, just like the cohorts, as Dr. Sweeney mentioned, um, all designed to build a culture of solidarity and community among our first year students. Um, you can, again, you can request a spot in this class on the housing application and uh, the registrar will place as many of you uh, in it as they can. Um, depending on other scheduling concerns. Um, as Dr. Sweeney said, we love questions here in the honors program. So I will leave it at that so we can get to your questions. Great, thank you, Emmy. Um, so we have two questions in the chat and uh, we are waiting for more. So uh, feel free to include the chat and then we have some questions also um, that that we uh, we want to make sure that that we've answered. Um, so this first question is, what are the benefits of the honors program? How does being an, an honors change your experience from the general student body? So I think I'll take a crack at that and then hand, you know, 
send it over to Terrence and, and Emmy to, if you've got anything else to add. So I'm going to say that um, aside from being around students who are intellectually um, engaged, super engaged, honors gives you a chance to land in a little nest, as I mentioned during my comments, uh, within the wider community. So it's 10% of the incoming student body are honors students. And the course is a little bit smaller than at the regular uh, courses. Or we cap our courses at 16. And um, you just, it's a soft landing on South Campus. We've so many honor students have said to us that they have met their best friends in the dorm, that they are the honors community. So it's, it's not just the classroom experience, but we've got a lot of community building experiences and just literally living and learning together organically has the students growing together and you don't have to there you don't have to be like all in in honors too you can be in the honors program and then find other life-giving corners in the university that you find that you want to spend all your time in no problem you can be admitted to the honors program and not seek an honors honors degree no big deal, no small deal, no deal at all. You can be in honors, the honors program and seek a minor, terrific. You can be in, honor, in the honors program and just take honors classes, no problem. Each, we really believe in honors that you're, you are the drivers of your own education and we are here to partner with you, to support you and to help you do that. Um, it's a really unique program, I will say, across the country, the honors program. I'm really proud to be leading it and leading it among with colleagues that are as dedicated as I am. Everything that we do, the honor student is at the center of everything that we do. Um, and then there are the sort of side benefits of um, the scholarship programs that I mentioned um, and the cultural outings that Dr. Sweeney mentioned. But, but honestly, the nest, the community, the caliber of student, I think that's what distinguishes the honors program. Emmy and Dr. Sweeney, do you have anything to add or do you want does, do one of you want to take, I think Dr. Sweeney, number two? Uh, yes, I'd be happy to take the second question. Um, and I, I think it speaks to some of the things that are that are unique about honors. Um, so this is from uh, Evan, oh, there's significant differences between the honors living and learning cohorts and the communitas. Uh, uh, learning uh, communities. So there are, um, there is a certain amount of overlap. There's some kind of shared vision of like how to, of integrating the education. But in honors, um, you know, what well, partially you're with the honors students. So in many ways, that's the biggest difference that you would get uh, being in an honors uh, cohort is your peers are, um, you know, all the honors students are very bright. I've taught uh, across the university, uh, but there's something that the honors student brings uh, in their general sense. And so much in a seminar uh, uh, classroom, right? a classroom centered around discussion amongst the students with the professor, the value is really dramatically lifted by your peers. Um, and what you'll see in honors, uh, part of the honors difference is just your peers, what their, their insights are, their, their willingness to do the work, their willingness to explore um, just makes it uh, so much more valuable um, than the otherwise very good opportunities um, in coursework here uh, at Villanova. Um, so I think, you know, I think the honors board has that kind of that elevated sense. Communitas is also a great program at Villanova. Uh, uh, I know many uh, professors who, who uh, work in that, but I think that 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 honors difference is, is being with that the, this kind of talented, talented 10th of, of Villanova undergraduate life. Um, thank you, Terrence. I think that between Dr. Willett and Dr. Sweeney, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, if it's all right, I'm gonna to turn to one of the questions that was uh, submitted ahead of time. A lot of the pre-submitted questions have a decent amount of overlap with what is um, being submitted in the chat. But one of them was, how many extra classes do students usually have to take for an honors degree? Um, so something I wanna clarify right off the bat is that all honor students have the opportunity to pursue an honors degree, but it's not required. You can remain in the honors program, take three or four honors classes throughout your time at Villanova, um, you know, get the most out of the cohort experience um, and not end up with an honors degree. 
uh, if you do want to pursue an honors degree, it the requirements vary by college. So it's slightly different for nursing, BSB, class, and engineering. Um, but uh, in most cases, it requires 10 courses. Um, for some colleges and some tracks, there's like an additional one credit seminar packed onto the 10, but it's usually 10 three credit courses, 30 credits. Um, and those are not 10 courses you take in addition to all of your major and core curriculum requirements. There's a lot of overlap. So honors offers um, honor sections of most core classes like honors philosophy, uh, theology, ACS. Um, a lot of those core curriculum requirements you take freshman and sophomore year, there are honor sections of them. Um, we also offer a rotating selection of courses from different departments. We pull our faculty from all over the university um, in addition to our affiliate uh, faculty member, Dr. Sweeney. Um, so we offer, you know, honors international relations courses. We're offering an art history course next fall. Um, and those selections rotate, um, but most students are able to find um, at least one or two a semester that uh, align with their major um, or an elective that they're interested in. So uh, 10 courses, not really 10 extra courses. They are courses that fulfill um, in most cases, courses that fulfill other requirements. Thank you, Emmy. Um, Dr. Sweeney, do you want to take this question? There are some questions about communitas versus uh, the uh, honors living and learning cohorts. If there's any benefit to doing communitas over honors, maybe I'll I'll ask Terrence. Uh, do you want to take a, a shot at that? And then Emmy, if you want to join in as well, there are a couple questions on this. Yeah, one thing, you know, Communitas, there are, um, you know, um, there are more themes in the Communitas, right? There's a, I think there's a creative writing Communitas. Uh, so that's, those are kind of interesting opportunities um, uh, to do Communitas. So that's one thing that Communitas has that, that, that the Honors Corps doesn't have. Um, it does both, they're, they're similar in that you will generally, uh, this is the nice thing about Honors and uh, also about Communitas is that you'll be with the same group of students so these courses, you know, any class when you're starting up the first you know, couple of weeks takes time to get into a rhythm, particularly a seminar. So in, in the cohort, you start your, your, your first semester freshman year and you're with the group for that uh, for your Augustine Culture Seminar uh, first semester and second semester. And usually you'll be uh, your first semester sophomore year, year. You'll again be with some of those students. So that's a really kind of great opportunity to, to one, make connections, friendships, uh, but also it's, you know, to develop the kind of intellectual rapport that's really important in a classroom. Uh, you also then in those scenarios have uh, a similar, um, generally it's a continuity with professors. We also, one thing that we do in our cohorts that isn't a part of Communitas um, is what we have we called common lectures. So it's an opportunity to bring uh, students in, in within the cohort, it's usually about two or three sections within a cohort, uh, bring them together uh, into one classroom uh, to hear from different professors. That's another part of the, the cohort experience. And likewise, another time the cohort gets together uh, is for our, our off-campus excursions. Now, again, with some of the, the community task programs, you know, uh, you know, leadership program or their service learning, there's going to be some opportunities that community task offers. Villanova is a wonderful place with lots of great opportunities. Uh, but the cohort, I think, gives you, again, that kind of elevated quality of, of students uh, a shared focus over two to three semesters, depending on how you fulfill your cohort courses, uh, and a really integrated way to explore uh, and fulfill your honors core courses. Um, one quick technical note, in addition to everything that Dr. Sweeney said, I believe that this year, ResLife and Communitas have made a change on the housing application, so honor students won't automatically be shown the option to join a Communitas cohort. Um, so if you are interested in that, you should reach out to the Communitas program directly with the, the contact information available on the website. I don't think that by default, you can select that on your housing form. But everything Dr. Sweeney said sounds right to me. Well. Thank you, Emmy. Um, I'm just going to take this next question, unfortunately, and say we, we, we don't have any, uh, we don't really have no data on this. How long once you apply for honors housing is the turnaround for the answer if you are in? I mean, unless you know, I mean, I will say that poor, th those folks who work in residence life have a really difficult job trying <laughs> to accommodate all sorts of um, student needs and trying to accommodate student 
requests, uh, incoming first year student requests. So I, I am not sure when they are able to answer if you're in honors housing. I mean, do you have any more information on that? I mean, I think the answer is it's, it's not in our lane. Yeah, unfortunately, that would be a residence life question. I can tell you the application closes on May 31st, so it wouldn't be till a little bit after that. So some sometime in the summer, I wish I had more detail, but I don't. Great, thank you. So, Emmy, I'm going to throw this back out to you. What would be an example timeline for honors courses requirements for freshmen through senior years? Which is a complicated question to ask because the honors program serves students in all four colleges. So if you're in engineering, if you're in nursing, if you're in business, or if you're in arts and sciences, you can graduate with an honors degree. Now, that means that the curricular architecture for each of those colleges is complex. And we partner with the colleges in order to enable those pathways to be fluid and um, and work for you and work for all the different majors in the colleges. So um, I just want to, <laughs> to say that before I send the question over to Emmy, because um, I don't I don't know if we if you we've got an example of like a, a timeline for courses. Yeah, I can tell you. So this is anecdotal. I'm not, I don't have like numbers in front of me for this. Like Dr. Mullen said, it it really does vary a lot. Um, but I would say on average, our first year students tend to take, they, they kind of front load honors courses. So um, first year students will often take one or two honors courses a semester, sometimes three, and then spread the other six or so over throughout the course of their, um, their next three years at Villanova. Um, the honors, I guess all four honors degrees do have senior kind of capstone requirements. Um, and by all four, I mean nursing class, VSB and engineering, um, which are meant to be taken senior year. Um, I just typed an answer to somebody in the chat asking about uh, doing a dual program that requires you to spend only three years at Villanova. Lots of our students graduate early and I'm always happy to work with students to make those requirements work. Um, they're, they're where there's a will, there's a way um, when it comes to honors requirements. So most cases, you'll take maybe one to three each semester freshman year. There will be a couple that you're meant to take senior year. Some colleges have a, a junior experience requirement. Um, it really does vary. And just to give you a sense of how much it varies, um, I, in the past couple of weeks, I've met with two students who are juniors, rising seniors, um, who have each only taken like two honors classes and are both planning to get the degree. And we worked out a plan with them to make it possible. So they're doing the opposite and, you know, taking all their honors classes senior year. Um, so there's there's some flexibility there. Thank you, Emmy. I'm going to join two questions together and send it over to Dr. Sweeney. So one is a pre-registration question or during register pre-event question. And the other is here from the chat. So, um, and just to make sure that we've answered this pre-event questions, can students join a living and learning community that is unrelated to their major? The, the, the answer is yes, but Dr. Sweeney, I'd like to, for you to talk to that, to that question a little bit and then add to that about um, the service opportunities, the volunteer, social or volunteer events together, the way that communitas communities do. Are there both social and volunteer opportunities for honors? Um, living and learning honors cohorts. Thanks, Dr. Sweeney. Great. Yeah. So um, no, you, as far as which cohort you want to be in, I mean, it's really like, which one do you find most interesting and compelling? Uh, so uh, I have, I'm teaching uh, PPE uh, in that cohort. So, um, you know, that's a, a great cohort if you're interested in a career in law, a career in, in politics, a career in economics. Um, or I have four engineers in my class and uh, they're tremendous students. And uh, two of them, uh, because of the requirements of the engineering school, they don't have to take the third semester uh, course that is connected to this on um, justice, but they've asked to take it anyway. Right? So I think, you know, you can see that for those engineering students, you know, presumably not uh, planning on going into law necessarily or politics or related fields. And yet they find it kind of really rich uh, and meaningful. I saw one of the questions was, you know, if you're, uh, I'm an engineer, so which cohort kind of fits me? Well, and sometimes, you know, think about what, what how do you want to approach your education with the kind of core questions? And that might be the more important thing to consider. That being said, it is a great way if you're like, wow, oh, down the road, I want to do X or down the road, I want to do Y. And uh, the student uh, interested in dentistry, medical humanities could be a great fit. 
Uh, for our engineers, the business society of technology is a great opportunity to reflect on, you know, particular aspect of technology. What is its meaning uh, and purpose? As far as uh, volunteer opportunities, we do uh, one of the great things we do at Villanova is we have uh, the Thomas of Villanova Day. So Villanova is named after St. Thomas of Villanova. Um, and on that day, we tend to have our honors students, uh, they, they, students will go off campus to different sites to do volunteer work of all kinds. Uh, we usually have our honors students, uh, we try to you know group them up so they can go together. Our, uh, in addition to that, our cohorts, uh, we have a couple movie nights over the course of those semesters. Uh, in the class on beauty, there is also a dinner. Uh, so there are kind of uh, additional opportunities on those uh, lines uh, in the cohort and within honors. Terrific. Thank you, Dr. Sweeney. The next question is about uh, how many spots are available in shaping a college life class. Emmy, I'm sending that over to you. Um, that is a great question. Currently, I believe we're able to offer five sections with, we usually aim to have about 12 to 15 students per section. 16 would be the, the cap. Um, but if there is a ton of demand, we can see what we could do to expand it to a couple more sessions. The sessions are all held concurrently. Um, yeah. Great, thank you, Emmy. Um, the next question is a great question. I think it comes from the fact that my introductory comments weren't 100% clear. The question reads, is honors solely a freshman and senior thing? Do you take honors classes or participate in honors events or cultural trips during other years? Housing can be multiple years for honors, correct? I think I heard that. You did hear that. Um, we offer honors housing for first year through juniors. Uh, I put that request in to housing every year for honors senior housing, and I've not yet been successful, but perhaps by the time class of 2028 is our seniors, I will be successful. Actually, I anticipate that I will be by that time. So, um, so yes, honors housing is really important to the program. We are a living and learning community, but, you know, we are crunched for housing at, at Villanova or have been a, until, until we bought a new campus. Um, so uh, and then you will you can take courses and be fully involved in the honors program uh, from freshman through senior year. We have a lot of opportunities. We have peer mentors. We have student advisory board. Um, we have the honors events board. We have a lot of different ways that students can get involved and to help help shape the future of honors. We are very, very interested in student participation and feedback and for it to be a student-led program. So our ear is really to the ground. Uh, the thing is that the Villanova student is really busy. The involvement culture is intense. You all are really involved in your high schools. You arrive at Villanova and you throw yourselves in uh, with all the energy you've got. And that's amazing. And so we try to respect that and to deepen your experiences without kind of being cumbersome and kind of adding and adding and adding and adding to the breaking point. Uh, so yes, you can be as involved in honors as you want to be from your first year through your fourth year, and I hope you will be. Yeah, to, to build on that, I mean, um, in the courts, the, those courses uh, often also are, are taken sophomore year. Uh, so that's a time where you kind of continue. It's been great bumping into some of my, my uh, uh, students from uh, previous semesters who are still coming. We're we're in a building called Gary Hall, where most of our classes are offered, and you can see you know, students coming back to that building for honors courses. For our PPE cohort, also the the second semester sophomore year, there's opportunity to study uh, at Cambridge uh, in the Cambridge PPE program. So that's another way where the kind of education is not just freshman, senior year, but it kind of continues uh, throughout in honors courses, uh, honors electives, um, uh, Dr. Moreland's uh, excellent uh, shaping a, uh, an adult life are kind of courses that, that still land heartily in that, that kind of middle section of your college life to maintain that honors difference. Thank you, Dr. Sweeney. Emmy, do you want to take the engineering question? Sure, yes. Um, there is a question in the chat that says, looking on the website, it says engineering requires four classes within engineering to earn an honors degree, yet there are only three engineering courses listed on the website. Does undergraduate research count for the course requirement or what other options are there for fulfilling those courses? Um, great observation uh, and good eye for catching that. Um, that's correct. So uh, if you're doing an honors engineering degree, you need to take four 
of your 10 courses as honors engineering courses. There are three normal honors engineering courses. We are in the process of developing more. I think uh, engineering is the second newest honors degree that we offer. It's one of the younger relationships. Um, the class honors degree and the VSB honors degree have been around for quite a while. Um, the engineering and nursing honors degrees have been introduced in just the last couple of years. I believe this year is our first graduating class uh, where we have nursing honors uh, students or students graduating with the honors nursing degree. Anyway, um, for engineering, uh, yes, one of the options to fulfill that fourth course would be undergraduate research. Um, you can do a sort of uh, independent study with somebody in the engineering department to conduct research, get credit for it. That would count. Another option is um, something that we offer to make the honors degree attainable for students like engineers and nurses who have really, really extensive, rigorous major and core requirements. Um, that would be contract courses. Um, so to contract a course, that would be when you take an existing non-honors course, you propose a project that augments the syllabus and deepens the learning in some way. So it could be um, an additional research paper. It could be like broadening or deepening. Um, an existing research question for an existing assignment in the syllabus, um, some kind of change that you would propose to the professor and to honors to make the class um, on par with the level of rigor you come to expect in your honors classes. Uh, through this option, you are able to get honors credit for a non-honors course up to twice towards, to the degree, towards the degree. So that is one of the options that we offer um, students who need flexibility. And you can do that in the engineering department to get that fourth engineering course. Um, we also allow students to request honors credit for study abroad courses. Um, there's a, a, an application you can fill out where you explain, um, there's parameters listed and you explain why the courses um, were on par with the honors level of rigor that you come to know and expect. Um, and if approved, you can get honors credit for those. Um, engineers do study abroad. There are a couple of different study abroad options for engineering students. So if you were to do a study abroad course in your um, area of engineering, that would count. Um, there are a couple of other uh, alternative ways, but those I, the, those three, I would say, are the, the big ones, um, undergrad research, contract courses, and study abroad. And by the way, those are available to anyone in any college, any major. Um, yeah. Thank you, Emmy. I think I'll take this next question. How does the freshman curriculum differ for honor students compared to that on the general Villanova website or course survey? So the first thing I want to say, it's one of the... 600 reasons why you should come to Villanova is that your first year curriculum, you don't have to go through the stress of trying to get into classes. Uh, the Villanova staff and faculty set the curriculum for you. What you are able to do is to make choices, first, second, and third choices about what courses you would like to take. And then uh, the advisors do all the really important behind the scenes work to try to match the preferences to as many students as possible. So when you're filling out your housing applications, there are going to be a series of questions. You're going to decide whether you want to join a um, honors learning cohort, for example. You're going to decide whether you'd like to start, you'd prefer to start uh, your first year, excuse me, your first semester with a sociology course, a social science course, or a theology course, or a philosophy course, or a literature requirement, uh, you make those preferences clear. And then you just send those along, and an advisor in your college puts together a first semester uh, curric uh, curriculum for you. Um, so there's no stress in that, which is great. And, and as Dr. Sweeney said, if you're in honors and you decide to do an honors living and learning cohort, for example, you will be fulfilling the university general education requirements through the honors living and learning cohorts. Uh, so it's not extra, but you're just walking through those core requirements in a compelling and cohesive way. Okay, internships and jobs. How does honors help seek with internships and jobs? Uh, let's see, Emmy, do you want to speak a little more about the Vacari program and then maybe I'll jump in? Sure, yeah. So the Vocari program is um, one of those uh, scholarship opportunities that Dr. Moreland talked about, which just as a reminder, it provides up to $5,000 of funding to uh, honor students doing summer internships, unpaid internships um, <clears throat> at uh, nonprofits that promote justice and the common good in some way. Um, so the Vocari program was 
born out of honor's commitment to um, service as a core part of uh, vocation and of successful um, human flourishing. Um, we really, we offer that opportunity so that students can take job opportunities that they wouldn't be able to otherwise. Obviously, it's really hard to accept an unpaid internship over the summer when you might have paid internship offers waiting for you. Um, but there is a lot of good work going on at um, nonprofits that can only offer these kinds of internships. So we at Honors pay the Vocare Fellows um, <clears throat> to take those internships and give them opportunities to broaden their professional horizons and uh, expose them to work they might not otherwise get exposed to in college. And this can really, um, it can change the trajectory of students' careers and interests. Um, and it's been very, very fruitful for some of our students. Um, yeah, and I'll, I guess I'll leave Vocare at that. Thank you, Emmy. I wanted to talk a little bit about shaping a work life. So we've got this distinctive shaping curriculum, shaping a college life, shaping a work life, and shaping an adult life. Emmy spoke about shaping a college life. Shaping a work life is a graded one credit course that students generally take either second semester, first year, or during their, their second or third years. And it fulfills that if you're in VSB, for example, it fulfills the backpack to briefcase via VSB 2001. Uh, requirement, uh, but anybody from any of the colleges can take the Shaping a Work Life course. And uh, it helps you put together a, um, what do you call it, the Instagram page? I don't teach it, of course. I can't help you with that. Helps you put together, yeah. an Insta, not an Instagram, a LinkedIn page, yeah. um, works on your, your resume, interview skills, all the sort of important things to prepare yourself to enter the professional working world. But what honors does is it digs deeper. It digs deeper into those questions about what do I want to do with my life? It teaches you the skills of professional discernment. And it asks you, do I really want to do X, Y, or Z? It um, it gets sort of below the professional questions into those self-identity questions about who I am and who I want to become. It's a great one credit course. It is transformative for students who take it. We are just trying to keep up with the need that we're meeting. We ran two sections this past semester. Um, it's really an exceptional experience. And then shaping an adult life. Uh, again, it's these courses are exploding in honor. So for next semester, I teach shaping an adult life and the course sold out in like a half hour. Only seniors are able to get into it now and not enough seniors. So we're trying to see how we can accommodate everyone. But what that course does is it helps students at the end of their Villanova experience to think about life beyond Villanova, to ask those really important questions about um, the meaning of work. It kind of doubles down on the shaping of work life, about the meaning of leisure. Students of Villanova and honor students in particular do not know how to spell leisure. Well, we help you to spell leisure and to really rehabilitate and create some really um, fruitful leisure practices in this Shaping Adult Life course. And then finally, we also deal with relationships about what, about friendships, about loving relationships, about what adult relationships look should look like beyond Villanova so that you can flourish as Villanova alumni. Um, it is a course that, that, has a pretty outsized impact on a Villanova honor student experience. So, um, so yes, we do help with seeking internships and jobs, but not in, but in the kind of untraditional ways because our career center at Villanova is outstanding. They do outstanding work. The secret sauce to an honors education is that we're distinctive without being redundant. So we depend upon the Career Center to do their good work, and then we shape our students in our own distinctive ways. Okay, so are there classes within the major that count for honors credit, or is it just seminars throughout the four years? Yes, there are, but I'm sending it back to Emmy. Perfect. I'm furiously typing away an answer to that question. Um, yes, there are, for many majors, um, Yes, we offer honors classes in that department, not every major and not every semester. I think this semester we didn't have an art history class, but we do next semester and we did last semester. Um, almost every semester we offer honors courses in some of the most popular disciplines, like there's almost always honors, econ, international relations, psychology, history. 
um, some upper level and some lower level. So some students might be taking those to fulfill core curriculum requirements and some students can take them for their majors. Um, not every major uh, has honors courses being offered in that discipline, um, but we're constantly rotating and always trying to expand the number of honors courses that we offer. But um, yes, if you're doing an honors degree, there's a very, very, very good chance you'll find honors course um, that works for your major and a 100% chance you'll find plenty of honors courses that work for your core curriculum requirements. Great, thank you. A core, uh, question from the pre-event uh, questions. Uh, how will choosing to live outside of honors housing affect the benefits I will gain from being in the honors program? Uh, either Dr. Sweeney or N Emmy, anybody want to take a shot at that? Emmy, I think the so this so the question is about about if you were not in honors housing, how would that affect your honors experience? Uh, and we, uh, as I tell my students when it gets to uh, time to register for courses, always feel free to double check everything I say with Emmy. Um, but I believe if you're if you're not in honors housing, that might mean you're not eligible for uh, the cohorts. Uh, but you still would be eligible to be for honors courses. There's other, you know, again, twenty percent of our students. Uh, in honors will fulfill their core, core requirements taking uh, without being in court. So there's still that, that possibility. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so you don't have to be in honors housing. There are ways to do that uh, in uh, in a way that's really great in honors. Uh, but I think, uh, and Emmy, if verif verify, that would mean you wouldn't be able to be in a uh, living and learning cohort. Or it's more complicated. Yeah, no, that that is roughly correct. I would say typically... Um, students in cohorts live in honors housing. So if you um, want to be in a cohort, you should plan to live in honors housing. Obviously, there are exceptions, like if you have, um, you know, uh, disability accommodations that require you to live in another building, obviously that is fine. We'll accommodate that. Um, if there is a space issue and like we have enough room in the cohort and we have enough spaces in the cohorted section of ACS, um, but, but for whatever reason, the gender breakdown of the wings doesn't work out and, and you get pushed to a different um, uh, building on South campus. That's, we're not going to kick you out of the cohort for that. Um, so there, there can be exceptions, but generally speaking, yes. If you, if you live in, if you want to be in a cohort, you live in honors housing. Um, but it doesn't affect any of your other honors classes in any way. Um, you can still certainly be a part of the honors community. It's just probably a, a little bit more difficult. And one thing I would say, just in my experience here in honors is that, you know, I mean, this is true of Villanova, you know, this is, it's not 35,000 students. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's a smaller place, a place that's, that is really student centered. And that is definitely true in honors. Uh, this time of year is a lifetime of year when, you know, students are emailing, uh, emailing us, but oh, I, I have, I need help with this requirement or this. And we, 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 we're here for you. That's, that's the point of what we're doing here. Um, you know, last semester senior needed a, got an ethics class she hadn't done ppe uh but then uh we worked it out so she joined my my ppe ethics course uh now i'm writing her uh, a recommendation for her to get a phd in biology right so this is we're trying to work with you so yeah i mean you take a slightly different uh path in honors you know you, you talk to emmy you talk to annie you talk to myself and and we work to make make things work for you thank you dr sweeney um, here's another question that was pre-submitted about research and, well, we talked about internship opportunities, but uh, research. So I'll speak to that. Uh, we asked the Career Center who conducts the alumni survey and does, does sort of a deep dive into the alumni survey to pull out the honors alumni and to see how they compare to the general population. And one of the distinctive markers of an honors student is that student has sought thesis experiences and has gone to graduate school. So not all our honor students go to graduate school, but honor students go to graduate school at a higher rate than the Villanova uh, population. Um, honors, the honors uh, graduates also are, um, our job placement rate is 100%, although I'm not allowed to put that on the website because it's for everyone who filled out the, the um, 
the survey, the job placement is 100%. It would be really nice. So it would make a really nice pie. Uh, the thing is that the job placement for the Villanova generally is astonishingly high too. So um, the difference, there's not like there's a, a big difference there. Really, the difference is in graduate school and in research opportunities. There's a senior thesis experience that um, honor students can take advantage of. It's a year-long experience. Uh, and a lot of those pieces end up being publishable. Students go to conferences. We support students financially to attend conferences and prepare their research, or sorry, present their research all over the country, some internationally. Um, honor students are really come to us knocking it out of the park and continue to knock it out of the park. And a lot of that is sort of student to faculty relationships that happen. Faculty and students end up doing research together or are going to conferences together. It's really exciting um, to see that, to see that happen and to see the deep loves that emerge over the course of four years for a particular student in a particular discipline. Okay, are there classes within the major that count for honors credit or is it just seminars throughout the four years? I think we've, we've answered that is my sense, right? Yeah. Um, I think so, yeah, it's just stuck, stuck open. Okay, okay. Uh, great. I think, oh, closing comments. And do either of you uh, have closing comments before I say my little closing comment? Dr. Uh, real quick, I saw a question about, about uh, clubs and things on campus. Our honor students are involved in all kinds of clubs and activities. Uh, I have a student right now who writes a, a satire column in the Villanova in the student newspaper. So there's all of those kind of uh, great opportunities. I guess one quick closing comment for me. I, I, we had a lovely alumni uh, happy hour uh, this this semester. A chance to see students from who had did honors uh, and see where they are, and they're in wonderful places. But they were thrilled to be talking with each other about their memories from uh, from Villanova and from honors. And you know, it's, again, it's probably hard to imagine what it's going to be like in six years when you're coming back uh, for a uh, an honors happy hour. But what I saw there was was what uh, what this honors community is all about. People getting PhDs in economics, uh, doctors, uh, people working in all kinds of fields. But they just they wanted to be together and they want to talk about honors. Thank you, Dr. Sweeney. Emmy, um, I don't really have anything else. I would echo what Dr. Sweeney said and add to it that. Uh, I don't even have the bias of coming from Villanova. I didn't go to Villanova for uh, my undergrad or grad school. Um, so I'm I'm relatively new to the community. I started this position last uh, spring and I got the exact same sense at our um, alumni reunion. You could just you could just feel the the energy of um, full spirit, I guess, and also uh, just a genuine sense of community and solidarity among um, honors alum. It's a really it's a great community to be a part of. I'm grateful to be a part of it. And I hope that uh, you all will be a part of it this fall as well. Thank you, Emmy. Um, last question there is what percentage of honor students choose to live in honors housing? It's about 80%. Uh, so I just want to close by encouraging you to either watch the uh, Invitation to Excellence program by via live stream on Friday or to view the recording of it. I'm sure university admissions will send you all a lot of information on how to do that. Um, and then I want to offer myself uh, as a resource to you. I'm happy to meet you either in person or virtually. If you still have any questions or concerns, or if you just want to talk through your decision, I uh, discernment is one of the things that I teach our students, and I am happy to um, be a companion to you uh, during this leg of your journey. Uh, so my my. Um, Emmy, can you put in the chat for every for everyone? Um, Anna.moreland at Villanova.edu. I don't know how to do that. I can't, but I think Patrick okay. can. Okay, Patrick, can you do that? Anna.moreland at Villanova.edu. So send me an email, easy to set up a meeting. Um, and look, congratulations. I hope you're all sighing relief that this part of the college application process, the college application process really is over. Um, you all have very bright futures ahead of you, and I hope I get to know them and you come to Villanova. Patrick, turning it back to you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, as echoed, you know, we see so much potential in you all and, and know that we, along with the rest of the entire Villanova community, would love to welcome you to campus this fall. 
we would be happy to put you in touch with any resources or answer any questions you might need in these last few weeks as you discern on your own college searching process. Um, with that said, we'll say go Nova, as you'll uh, be inclined to say when you're, once you're a student here. And otherwise, we wish you all a great evening and a great rest of your senior year. Thank you for taking the time to join us. We will have a recording of this presentation as well. In addition to, as Dr. Nora Moreland noted, um, Friday's honors event that will be in person along with a live stream recording. Thank you all. Good night.